See Lindelof videos, Solving Absolute Value Equations, Part 2. In the last video we did, I did a bunch of stuff with fractions and uh, where the numerator was had to be absolute value, the denominator had to be absolute value, or, or both of them. In this video, I just want to go into some other cases that sometimes actually uh, make it hard for your calculator to interpret what you're asking it to do. So I'm going to start off with the easy stuff. We talked about how to get to the solve function. And, what we're going to do is I just went straight to the library. I have solve here. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to start putting these equations in. The first one I have is negative 8 times times an absolute value quantity. So here's my negative 8. And what I'm suggesting to you is this. I could just put an absolute value here. And hopefully the calculator would realize that it's negative 8 times this absolute value. But just because sometimes you're in the middle of a test and you don't have time to screw with this stuff, it's better just to put times. So I'm going to put the times and then I'm going to put in my absolute value, right? And then what they wanted was it was a fraction again, and they wanted the absolute value of the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to take control division, right? That gives us the solidus, the numerator and denominator more clearly. Uh, and the variable at the top was n, and at the bottom they just had what they have four, right? So from here, this is very important. I'm stuck down here in the denominator. If I go over once, see I'm still inside the argument. You want to get all the way outside the argument before you put your equal sign in. So here's my equal sign, and they wanted this to equal negative 12, negative 12. This, right, this is where I screwed up last time. And I get so frustrated, I get these, like, syntax errors. The problem that you're going to get is if you don't pay attention. So I forgot to put in the comma here, to put in the comma here. Right? And then my variable wasn't x, my variable was n. So there's my variable n. So variable has to match variable, hit enter, and we get an answer. That works out really good. Let's just do one more problem that's similar but not exactly the same and see how this works. Again, we're going to go to solve. I'm already on solve. If not, you just scroll down using using this cursor right here. It's lit in red. I'm going to go back to solve here. Hit enter, right? And this time, I have, a, I have a constant value in the front, and the constant value is negative 7. Now this time, I'm going to see what happens if I put the net, it's minus, minus the, the, this, this absolute value term. So I'm just going to see what happens and hang in there with me. Absolute value, and the term inside happens to be x plus 6. So here's my x plus 6. I'm going to all right, I'm going to take my cursor, I'm going to get outside of the argument and I'm going to put equals and it's supposed to be negative 12. So here's negative 12. Comma, this is again something that that you screw up because you're like in this huge hurry, but take a second and do this comma x fingers crossed, hit enter. So there we have an answer. So here, this remember this negative sign right here is a negative one, and this is this is multiplication between this and this. So here we got away with it. Here maybe we do, and maybe we don't. But remember, if you ever get a syntax error, if you take anything from this video, at all, if you get a syntax error, please just look at what you've written and ask yourself: Did I can accidentally confuse my calculator anywhere? Did I have a variable of n here and a variable of x here, or vice versa? Does everything match? Did I say clearly what it was I was trying to do? Hey, if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. I, I'm really getting back to working on this calculator a lot. Uh, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.